so welcome to another video session of mine so in this video session i'm gonna talk about scrum process and how we can relate test automation into scrum so in this diagram we have the typical scrum uh, process in an agile environment agile development environment so the first phase that we can put automation into where we plan the product backlog so while we're doing the product backlog we can bring in the planning stage of test automation so at the planning stage uh, we have to see can all the projects be automated so can we automate this project that we are trying to implement test automation we cannot always implement test automation for every project short-term projects which exist for two or three months or four months we cannot automate and also projects which has only one or two or three project life cycles we should auto and we should not automate and there's another concern sometimes we have the practice of exploratory testing so exploratory testing in one of testing and it involves it doesn't have any repeatable test cases it's like a one of testing it uses the testers innovative out of the box thinking techniques so we cannot automate these kind of test with test cases then we have to look at different technology platforms sometimes different technology platforms like DOS command line we cannot automate using a test automation tool then also we have a skill issue right so every organization the quality engineers should know should be skilled enough to script using a programming language and also to use a test automation tool and also they should be skilled enough to develop a test automation framework so in the planning process what are the criteria that we should go for test automation? We should look at the time. If the project is long, in, is in a long duration, like more than one and a half years or one year, we can come up with a test automation plan and engage te test automation into this product development and testing. And also we can have, we have to look at the number of release cycles. More the release cycles, more we can execute the test cases. That automation suit. So more the ROI we will get. So we should look at the amount of release cycle still we should have a set of qualified uh, skill or automation engineers who have the experience and who know who has the know-how how to use the programming language to script the test cases and also to build a, build a test automation framework and also they should have skill on test automation tool then they should have know-how on the technology like continuous integration integrating with bug tracking tools integrating with uh, jira for dashboards and also using of reporting tools so we should know we should know the technology involved and we should know the application technology involved so there are a lot of things that we have to learn and also the manual test case count if we have test cases of 25 we can do it with manual testing but if we have a lot, lot of test cases, like 300 or 400 or 500 test cases, and to, to execute this regression suit, if, if it takes more than, say, two or three days, it's a high potential candidate for automation. So the planning process, the procedure. Look at the technical skills of the team. Okay. If not, we have to give them training, on-the-job training, online tutorials, and also look at the QA budget. If the QA budget is high and if the car, if a potential customer is going to pay for us, we can come up with commercial tools or else we have to go on open source. Then select the right test automation tools, do a POC. Select the right test automation tool which can be able to automate the application under test. So you have to do a POC on the application and also on the test case and also on the tool. Select the scripting language. You should select a scripting language which the QA quality engineers or test automation engineers are competent of and then a scripting language which supports a lot of libraries a scripting language which is which is used by the community do not think like this application under test is developed in .NET that does not mean that your application that your testing tool the scripting language should be in .NET it can be in Java or Ruby or Python Create a good automation framework. Automation framework which considers the core components of configurability, extendability, scalability, reportability, and also viability. So 
So we can look at data-driven frameworks, which we try to remove data from the scripting logic. So QTP facilitates data-driven with tables, data tables, global and local. Selenium also gives does not give an out, out of the box solution, but we can use Apache PUI to do ex read data from Excel files, or we can use programming techniques in Java to read text files, CSV files, or from databases. Keyword driven is we have set up keywords and we have set up uh, values, so it's just uh, put in the keywords and executing the test automation framework. But there are modularity, there are modularity frameworks. So there are modules which will be reused and we will develop test scenarios. So these are kind of test automation frameworks. So we have testing tools. So when we are planning test automation, we have to look at the application on the test and we have to bring up a test automation tool which will recognize the elements which are on the application screen or in the web page. So there are a lot of test automation tools available. For Windows, we have QTP. Robot Framework, AutoIT, RanRx, and also we have Vineo, VNAP Driver. So with this, there are Selenium, Vater, Selenite, RanRx, we have Protractor, and we have Nightwatch.js. So there are a lot of tools. For mobility, we can use APM, MonkeyTalk, Calabash, etc. Vcode, Xcode, Utilities, and all these things. And also web services testing, we can use SOAP UI, SOAP Sonar, and also Rest Assured. And also we can use Karate. There are a lot of tools coming up in the community, so we should be able to competent enough to learn these tools, to look at what these tools can do, what are the limitations. Security testing tools also, there are OSZ attack proxy, OS web scrap, OS, OS mantra, and also FF developer, Firefox developer tools. So you should make a test automation framework for for automation to survive in your project. Look at the configurability, look at reportability, scalability, extendability, reusability, which I have talked in an earlier video training session where we try to emphasize more on test automation framework development. Test automation framework types, which I have covered, keyword driven, data driven, modularity hybrid. This is a typical Java based automation framework that you are familiar with. We can use the page object or page factory model to make to, to promote reusability within our framework, which can be where we have set up reusable page elements, pages, which can be utilized by number of test cases. And we use the Apache PI to, to arrive on data-driven facilities. So we have configurable files which will read URLs, then we can also we will be reading user credentials and those things which will where we have to, you know, automate and execute these scripts in different frameworks. So we should have parameterized URLs, user credentials, and also data, where we can create number of users, number of products in the application under test. We have test engine reporting, but there are more report, reporting tools like LU reporting, we have ATU reporting, and also extent reporting. We can use them. Make use of then SQL library to make uh, we have we use SQL library in the Java automation framework to co for components which we cannot which the Selenium cannot locate. Then we use JDBC for having database verifications and importing data to the test automation suite. Priority of test automation when you get a project first option is to do a smoke test automation then build verification testing. Smoke test and build verification testing only touches the core functionality. There has regression test will cover the entire functionality of the application, which is which is divided to positive and negative test scenarios. The functional testing is functional testing only limited to automation. No, it is used for unit testing, web services testing, security testing, mobility testing. So there are different diverse pla diverse platform that we have to look into. Performance testing does not come under test automation, it's a separate area in quality engineering. Let's move into plan test automation scripting. This is the next phase. So when we plan test automation scripting, we can do, when we are doing sprint planning session, we can plan automation activity. For each QA activity, if we can do automation 
we can if we have time to do automation we can include it into our own user story which we are use which we are going to carry out during the sprint so we can have an activity within the user story and have expected criteria established within the user story itself that is called acceptance criteria so for automation activity, we can have acceptance criteria created within the user story. Then also have acceptance criteria established. If you, you have to establish acceptance criteria within the user story, and better to have a separate user story if we cannot achieve the automation for that particular user story within that sprint. So we can have it as a separate user story. So it will be not in the, it will be not integrated with the manual QA or and the development user stories. Let's move into test automation scripting. This is our next phase. So we have started automating user stories in the Scrum based environment. So we first start with creating stay page objects and method which will be reused by most of the test cases. Create test scripts utilizing these page objects. Then Execute and see within the sprint whether the scripts are working towards the test case intended. That is, whether it which verifies the expected result. Discuss the automation activity and its progress in the daily scrum. So, the automation engineer or the QA engineer who will be doing automation should also participate in the scrum, daily scrum, and if there are blocks. We should communicate this to the rest of the team. Make sure you make sure it satisfies acceptance criteria. So when you, as I told you before, when we are trying to take test automation in that particular use story, where there, there are manual testing and also development, you should establish acceptance criteria within the use story for automation also. So review completed scripts. This script you can be peer review self-review then peer review then it should be a lead review and sometimes if the customer has quality engineers test automation engineers in his side in, in his other side he can have a client review also then we do the execution upon finishing within the sprint this is where we execute the test scripts which we have developed so when we execute we should pass these scripts there should be no failures in the current sprint what we have scripted so we can demo it to the scrum team at the end which will have the product owner which may have also have the project project manager qa managers and all the developers and quality engineers so what we do once we script it we execute it against the functionality and we check should check whether it achieves whether it assets the expected results of that use story. Then we, within the sprint process, we may have a regression suit which is automated. So when there is development completed on a user story, we can run this execution suit to ensure that the exit earlier, the previous functionality is not broken when there are development, when there is development. We can have this integrated to the continuous integration server where the developers pushing code once it's pushed in, they might execute, it might trigger the unit testing and thereafter it might execute the automation scripts. Share results with the Scrum team. You can share it within the Scrum daily Scrum or you can share it within a separate email or in a dashboard. Make report available to the entire team. Make it available, send it through email, send it, display it by a dashboard. So you can share this information whether the scripts are passing, what scripts are failing. So this is part of ex script execution within this Scrum process. Then finally, how we can deliver scripts. If we have a regression suit, we have to include this in the regression suit. If we have a regression suit deployed in the continuous integration server, we have to include the new scripts into the continuous integration server uh, automation suit. Deliver scripts to the client. If there is an agreement with the client to deliver the scripts, we should provide necessary documentation if the client needs to execute the scripts, user guides, standards and specifications on the test automation suit. Have the scripts integrated to the integration server, which I had told you earlier. 
make sure the report is available to the entire staff team or even if the client needs it you should be able to make it available via online dashboard what is continuous integration continuous integration is where we developers when the when we use a version control system the developers try to you know push the code to the version control so it will trigger a build which will also trigger the uh, which will also send a signal to the continuous integration server which is which is the common one we use is jenkins and it will trigger and execute the unit testing scripts if the unit testing scripts are passing it will start executing the test automation to test automation scripts upon completion whether the build is passing or failing it will trigger send email messages sms messages or even it will uh, send the results to the remote online dashboard this is called continuous integration so you can have hybrid frameworks where there are a lot of you know mobile there will be one of global framework where they will they will integrate web driver that is selenium then it will also integrate beta for pm so there are a lot of global frameworks these days used where it, there are integration between jira there is integration with drug tracking tool there are integration within online reporting tools or reporting frameworks so there are a lot of more lot of things happening in test automation so this is the end of a final video fantastic video session hope you enjoyed let's meet up with another session